I believe we are live. Um, I'm just going to check. Yes, we are. Just going to open my... English isn't coming very easily to me today. English? Yeah. The brain and the mouth feel like they're not fully right. engaged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that. I'll probably be able to see it light language easier. Have you got your sound on, on your phone? Just yeah. turn it down if you have, because it'll, it'll um, just give a bit of feedback. Um, okay. <laughs> just bear with us while we just do the technical stuff. Yeah, we're live. Um, okay, I'm going to share. Share it to Love Speaks Love. And share it to a few groups. Do, do, do. One day, I'll have a little intro and make it more professional. <laughs> but until that time, here we are. Hi, Pia. Hi, Jane. Hi, John. Ah, oh, lovely. Oh, I need to turn my sound down as well. <laughs> Wonderful. So with me today is the wonderful Shaz Hargreaves. Welcome to Love Speaks Love, Shaz. Thank you. Thanks for the invite. It's really lovely to be here. No. I am very excited about this, actually. Like, we've been connecting um, through a lot of comments. We have, we share the 11 numerology, which for those of you who have an 11 numerology can be a bit full on sometimes. <laughs> so it's always like, I know you, I know yeah. you through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've, yeah, obviously I've seen you commenting a lot on a, lo a lot of, um, a lot of top shows um, and felt the connection with you. And we were gonna speak soon anyway, but we've decided to do it live. So I'm going to um, connect our hearts together, first of all. And I will just say, bear with me today. Things are not engaged. My brain is very foggy, very fuzzy today, which is probably a lot to do with the strong energies of the show as well. Um, and maybe doing this little heart to heart connect will help with that. So we'll see. <laughs> so I invite us, if we're in a position to do so, to close our eyes. Take a few long and slow deep breaths and just bring our awareness to our heart space. And just focus on your breathing, on your in-breath and your out-breath. And if you feel to, to do the box breathing of breathing in for four, holding for four, breathing out for four, and then holding for four, it's a wonderful way of connecting to ourselves and bringing our energy in. If we're feeling a bit scattered, it really helps to ground us. And as we bring our awareness to our heart space and intend to breathe in love. And on your out breath, you can let go of anything of the day so far or the day ahead or just breathe out love. And connecting my heart to yours, Shaz, and connecting our hearts to everyone watching live, everyone watching the replay. And everyone watching on YouTube. And connecting our hearts to the heart of Gaia. 
And as we do that, maybe visualizing roots growing down from the base of our spine, from our coccyx, our tailbone, and sending energy down through the soles of our feet, all the way down through the layers of earth, all the way to the crystal diamond heart of Gaia. And as we connect our heart to the heart of Gaia, feeling her loving, supporting energy, feeling her love for us, feeling her gratitude for us, for all we are, for all that we do. and connecting our hearts also to the heart of the sun, the heart of the moon, and to source creator energy. And bringing our awareness back to our own beautiful heart. And I invite us to put one or both hands on our heart space in the center of our chest and say to our beautiful hearts, I love you. I love you. I love you. And opening, <laughs> this is really hard to do, opening our eyes whenever we're ready. Oh, I could just sit in that space with my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so thank you so much for joining me, Shaz. Thanks, It's lovely to be here. And I was reminding myself last night, I was watching some of you connecting with Todd and um, with Shanine as well. And you had quite an awakening experience in 2012 um, when you were doing, um, when you were kind of forced to meditate. (laughs) And I loved what you shared. I loved your, um, I loved how open you were at that time because you weren't aware of that. But as soon as you started meditating, you started to get huge downloads. Yeah. Um. And you're very visual as well, like you, when you're in that meditation space. And I think even when you're not, yeah. you see things very clearly and yeah, you're yeah. very, very sensitive to energy. So do you want to tell us a little bit about um, about what happened for you when you started meditating, like what you were what you were kind of shown and also how that's been since? Because that was 2012. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Because when, when I, I, you know, I was in a treatment centre, you know, um, drug and alcohol treatment centre, mm-hmm. and it was mandatory that we did this 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 meditation. And all I remember early on is I, I did, one, of, one of the staff said one day, because I couldn't cope, I didn't understand at that time that I was picking everything up, not just within the physical ear, <clears throat> the stuff that was happening probably collectively, outside of that, I didn't understand any of it, so... I used to just say, I just feel overwhelmed. I just, 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 I can't leave me alone. I was frightened and I had a lot of stuff of my own, a lot of stuff that I came in with. And um, it was mandatory that we meditated. And I was sitting in group one day and I'd never even heard of the word meditating. I didn't have a clue about anything. So we're sitting in, and it was a guided meditation that this lady was doing. And as much as I was trying to focus on what she was saying, my... I went off. I just kept getting this picture of this eye coming in and I, did, I couldn't wait out what it meant. And I felt ashamed. I wasn't going to tell anyone. I certainly wasn't going to tell anybody. So it's like when I started to just sort of um, play with it a little bit, I started getting stuff coming in that I couldn't make sense of. You know, there used to be a programme, World in Action. You know, the, the, the true man on the... I'm thinking, why is the world in action guy coming into my head? And it was so, um, it was so clear. 
And so I didn't even really, you know, research what it meant or anything like that. I just, I just went with it. And there was a day an angel showed up. I kept, I kept getting all this symbology and crystal pyramids and people's hands around it drawing lights. And I used to think, I can't tell anyone this stuff. You know, I've had that label all my life that I'm not. So for me, as much as the, the, the the twelve-step program, which which initiated my awakening in terms of personally looking at myself, patterns and behaviours and all that stuff, and people who practice this program are talk about the, the the eleventh step, which is prayer and meditation, but I hadn't come across anyone who was vocalising mm. what I was experiencing. If that makes sense, mm. then I started to learn a little bit more about. I'd go back into my childhood because I had childhood experiences where as much as there was a lot of... Tra- and I know we heard it's not about the story. And when I heard that, you see, this is what I do externally. When I heard, you know, when all this, 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 this stuff around spirituality, and I understand the principle of that, it's not about the story. But you see, I had a head that, that fitted great because as much as when I come in, that's all I had was my story. And I got from that, telling that story, I got love and concern, but the, I wasn't attached to any feeling in regard. I could just tell you the story like I was a third person. Yeah. So in terms, in terms of all that stuff, I had to learn because then when I heard it's not about the story and I started connecting to certain feelings, then that gave me a, well, it's not about, because I always went external and feared what people thought and fear of being judged. They'll think I'm saying it for attention or they'll think I'm doing it because of this. And that would keep me, that, I would avoid, I'd avoid sharing certain experiences I was having in terms of my emotional nature and, and how it plays out my body. Fast track a little bit. I was getting all this stuff coming and then I, I always knew I loved nature. I always, even as a child, I loved to be in the woods. I, I'm getting goosebumps now because she's speaking to me. I love to be, because when I was in nature, I felt in my body. I felt in my body, you know. And as much as, you know, I hear about the child and I, there was so much that went on in my childhood with, without going into the whole madness of it. Uh, there was a lot I had to contend with. There was a lot of illness. There was a lot of abuse, not just to me, so a lot of, there was never any um, security. So my, my um, emotional security was never intact, but put me in the woods, or put me in nature and I felt okay. I felt in my body, I felt safe. You know, being in nature. And when I started doing a little bit of um, research around these meditation experiences I was having, then I started to learn about the Fibonacci sequence. Just just little bits, no big um, head stuff going on here. It just started to make sense, sense to me. And then I started getting all the sacred geometry stuff. I was always drawn. I was, I was up forever counting. And I used to think, why do I do this with me? I used to think it was because I was trying to process, and then I, I put it to certain labels that I'd given to me, which I believe sit in here. It was a form of light language, which I'm only just starting to get in touch with that at the minute because I have a lot of um, fear of being judged. People think I'm just just nutty stuff. But as a child, I always counted, and I was I didn't know, but today I believe that it's it, a result of because I've organically just been going into and going with it. And I believe it being downloaded to me and it makes sense to me of, of how I'm clear and, and what I'm seeing. But the meditation, so I, I, as a little girl, I loved um, anything that was symmetrical. It had to make sense in terms of symmetry. Yeah. And then I started getting the, um, the downloads of protons and neurons in light. Just coming together, breathing, and, and, and then I started listening and saying, well, this is what we're made of. This is what we are fundamentally. This is who we are. You know, and this this this, this last um, year for me, I mean, I've done a lot of work on myself. I've done a lot of work on myself. Now, that doesn't mean to say I don't fall short of my ideals and don't stumble. I absolutely believe in fully human, fully divine. Now, that's not, again, our clause, 
for when I step back into because it's about balance and responsibility and you know taking ownership of how I can be triggered and how and and I'm okay with all that. I am I can get triggered on any any given day. You know, but the beauty of it is, you know, we we have the you know we have this inner knowing and understanding. I have to be the mother to myself. I have to be the mother to myself and connect to, to, to Gaia, to what I call source, which is external for me, but I understand it's internal as well for me. Um, it just blows me away because as we were talking before, in terms of listening to my body, I had an experience a couple of weeks back, you know, and how trauma started to play out and show itself to me was something had happened external to me and then it play out like a tape in my head and I'd be back in the place where this trauma took place and it play out in my head I wasn't really listening to my body I've been listening to my body an awful lot in terms of the collective stuff and separating what's mine and what's collective because I absolutely knew going back two three years ago before I even listened to Solarji God I was blown away when I started coming across other people you know who experienced similar and, and Solarji and all that it's like oh my god this is huge this is on a massive massive collective scale and and whatever and i as much as um going back three years i used to say to a friend of mine um she's a sponsor in in in, in my recovery but i call her a closed mouth friend and she, she's got her own planet planet of gongs and started having activations when i went to see her and i remember saying to her about three years ago there's this resistance going on it's playing out in my body it'd be so intense what was going on what was coming in and what was going on collectively It'd be so intense. I'd be in so much pain with it physically. And I'd be saying there's this massive resistance going on. But all I know is it's not mine. It is not mine. So I started learning a little bit. And then when, because I didn't even know when there was going to be a full moon or a new moon, but I started listening to my body and I, and, and I would play out in me physically. And you said before, your head today doesn't seem to be... I used to say, it's like my head is full of wet newspaper that I can't quite read, but my body's trying to tell me stuff. So I started listening to all that stuff. Then I started realising that, going through my own processes of clearing, and I'm not saying I've cleared everything because there was an awful lot that happened in my childhood. So for me to sit here, it'd be quite arrogant to say I've cleared everything because, you know, my body a couple of weeks ago showed me I was, I come across something on social media without going into it, it wasn't very nice. It was to do with a child and, and, and a father. And my body just went into this heightened terror. So it wasn't so much here anymore. It, my body was showing me. You know, and there was a lot going on that week. And, you know, June's been these energies coming in. So I've really had to look after myself and all of that. Take care of myself, process, but trying to clear what's going on. But this showed me this was this was absolutely mine. So I decided to um, do a meditation and I sobbed within that for the first time. I felt safe. I was in this heightened terror and I, and I just went, went, went into my heart with it and just held myself. And all it needed to do was have a really, really good cry. But my body was like, so I'd done a meditation and I knew a lot being going on. And I know I pick all that stuff up. And this, this angel showed up, call her this angel, and... Because I don't really go into, I mean, I do get visual, but I've been concentrating on my body. Then before this angel showed up, I'm inside my body and the head one was wanting to come in with, this isn't how I thought it would look. I thought it'd be energy points and what I needed to be. And it was my intestines and it was my stomach and it was showing me why my stomach, because I carry it all in my stomach, you know, the solar plexus area. And the sacral, which is where a lot of trauma is held, as we know. And I really suffer with me, me root. You know, I was in a wheelchair as a child and all that stuff, but I absolutely know when my when my back is, is, is like that, it's generally somewhere I'm feeling threatened and my security is threatened. So here I am, I'm doing this meditation. Oh, you sounds, hang on a sec, you sounds got, oh, hang on, Shaz. That's... <laughs> You haven't touched your phone, but it's just, <laughs> you're good again now. Just try and speak again. Oh. Can you hear me? I can now. That, that. phone <laughs> 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 just muted itself without any of us touching it. There's been yeah. interesting things going on with, with the energies while you've been speaking. 
um when I unplugged my fan I must have <laughs> accidentally unplugged the modem as well and I just want to say how smoothly I managed to get it to um, connect with my phone using my phone as a hotspot um and I don't even know if you noticed but you just carried on um and then I came back in but yeah your phone just muted itself without you even touching it <laughs> well you're just muted so I didn't hear a word you just said <laughs> I didn't hear a word of what you've just said, but I'm free, I'm picking up what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. And this I've is, got like this is what happens when two elevens <laughs> get together. <laughs> we blow all the circuits. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so where were you then? You you'd um yeah, so we and I just I just want to say that there's so much commonality here between us I laughed when you talked about the symmetry that's always been one of my things I like things to be balanced balance yeah. is really important to me again that's that's the thing about 11s it's the two ones balance and cooperation is is like the numerology of 11 now yeah I think I can still I can still I can still I wasn't sure if I'd lost your sound again then the working with the body as well so I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia in um, a long time ago, 2001, I think it was, or even 2000, it's a long time ago. So I know that I clear a lot of stuff through my body and I know I was picking up a lot of energy in my body as a nurse, working in a 250 year old hospital that has obviously never really had the energy cleared. So it feels like even just me walking down a corridor, I was, I was picking up the energy, but I didn't know how to transmute it. Yeah. So I've spent the last, you know, almost 20 years transmuting the energy that I've picked up in my body and that's where I feel it. So I, I always intend to spend a day a week working on the energy of my body because I know I'm clearing it for the collective and oh, what's yeah. going on here? Okay, this is collective stuff. But I know as well that I'm, and I, I'm intrigued by your crystal pyramid that you saw too. Because even before I got into all this, I was going down crystalline tunnels. That's the only way I can describe it. It was lots of <clears throat> lots of geometries, different colours. <laughs> yes. And I oh the, the edit oh that's really strong. <laughs> it's gone up and up. Wow, I can feel it. <laughs> so I was feeling. Um, I've been opening crystalline pathways in my body. And I wonder if you've been doing the same as well. This is a lot of the work that I've done. It's been working with the crystalline energies. So a lot of the work that I do on myself but on other people is bringing in the crystalline energies, the crystalline geometries and the new crystalline ley lines for want of a better word in the body. Wow. Does that make sense to you? It makes complete sense. Yeah. yeah. Complete, complete sense. How did you see, I just want to hold that thought. <clears throat> when you said that you saw an angel, how did you see the angel? How did it present itself to you? This is the Arby. This is the articulating. She was just um, not so much holographic. Well, it, it's certainly not solid, but she was just pure pink and purple, merging. The, the top is so just light. Light, but I could see the outline of who, what she was. I knew, I absolutely knew exactly what she was. And she wanted to just hold me in this space of, and when I, when I Googled it, because I'm a Googler, I, you know, the angel of mercy. And what it, what it said to me is, as much as I have all these downloads and what I've got to clear, I have to know myself in that space of love and care because I'm clearing, I'm clearing it. Because what was downloaded was, the intuition, and this is when I go against my intuition. I think people think you're not, but apart from me and on these platforms, <laughs> what was also downloaded was, well, where I have to learn to separate is to listen to me body, really listen, because it's a quite a similar, when it's when I'm emotional, I've got, I've learned to separate when it's emotional and when it's collective. There's, yeah. there's, there's a difference, there is a difference, very similar, but it's, there's a difference. And then I was told, you, know, like you just described to me, you know, collectively, your back's out because the, the, the whole planet is going through an economic change. So the, the, the base of 
the security, financial security, emotional security, it's all threatened right now. And then the solar plexus is where we give the personal power away. So on a, on a, on a collective level, that's, that's gone back God knows how long. That, that's mm -hmm. been happening in terms of how we give our personal power away and the trauma attached to that. Yeah. And it's all, you know, so I absolutely I thought, okay, yeah, that, that's what's happened. That's why it's, because going back before last year, the Lions Gate, it, it went a lot gentler, but it's like it's amplified, it's spiked again. Yeah. It's really, really spiked again. So, yeah, listening to my body and organically, I mean, I like my food and I, you know, I have uh, days where I'm like, oh no, I don't care. I'm having the chocolate and I'm having this and I'm having that. But my body's now sort of making me feel if I overindulge on something that's I start, my body starts to let me know straight away, the solar plexus area, all that stuff. It's saying to me, no. So it's about finding out what, what works for me. That doesn't mean to say I can deprive myself across the board. It's just starting to listen. But this organic changes are taking place, you know, in terms of um, clearing and looking after ourselves in and what you've just said around the the, the, the crystalline. Yep. I was getting stuff around timeline stuff as well because I used to think, what's that mean, timeline, timeline, time? You just continue to step out of the old paradox of how I used to respond. And as soon as I said, I mean, I might have been in both spaces, you know, when I was clearing. I think it was, I don't know whether it was you or Sean doing a light language. And oh my God, I, I went into generational clearing within this. I see myself as a child, my mum, me, and me, to your family, blah, 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 blah. And then I'm in this vibration because I can feel and hear it. And I hear the, I, the, the, the frequencies and that was changing. But yet I was in this as well. I was witnessing it as I was clearing it. So it's just, just it's just ongoing, isn't it? Where we continue to just, it's forever changed. It's not stay stagnant. Yeah. It's continuing to look at ourselves. The human aspect, so important to the emotional aspect of who we are. And also to remember the divine aspect of encompassing the male, female, and that balance of, because I was very masculine orientated. You know, I fought all my life, yeah. you know, to be heard, to be seen, or to prove that I didn't need anyone or anything. It was very, yeah, very driven. Mm -hmm. And it was all fear-based. It was all fear-based, and it was yeah. all survival, and it was all that stuff. So it's bringing them, them away. I mean, I've had lots of experiences around that stuff. I used to say to a friend, it's like there's three aspects to me. Before I really understood there's like, there's like, and the only way I can describe it is the male, female child. And she'd say, let's say, yeah, yeah, that's like the Trinity. I said, I'm, try, I'm trying, in order for me to be able to embody them three, I know there's work to be done. All I know is there's work to be done. So just being shown and shown and shown and listening to me more than anyone else's experience or what they believe. I mean, I can take direction and guidance around stuff, but I have to discern for me. Yeah. You know, I have to discern, okay. And are you hearing your your higher self-guidance much more as well? You, you feel like you're much more tapped into that, like you're embodying much more of, of your higher self? Much more, because I've been told, right across the board, <laughs> even as a child, my mum used to say, how oh, do you know that? Mm -hmm. And I'd just say, I don't know, just know. I, and then... You come in, I come into the company and I was like a child, I was like raw, I felt like my skin had been ripped off the first time I was free of everything. And I, it was alien to me. You know, I, I was very reactive, I was very, very sensitive to criticism, very sensitive to him. And I, I used to hear, if you want to call it your higher self, but I'd go against it through fear. Through fear. And I can, I can take, I can trace that back to when I very first went against myself as a two-year-old. Mm -hmm. But today I listen more because it's in my voice. I used to think, well, how can it be so so God? No, <laughs> of course it's in your voice, yeah. Of course it's in your voice, but I'm listening more and I feel it when it's downloaded and it's coming in. Comes in yeah. through my through my awareness, my consciousness. And I've started to step into that a little bit more and say, right. Because if, yeah, when I do that, without me sounding um, egotistical, <laughs> it's generally right. 
no. probably more so than it isn't yeah yeah i just wanted to share with you another um kind of common ground um when i was 17 i think 16 17 I slipped down the stairs at school. We had to wear Clark sandals, which were slippy. They were these old yeah. stairs. It was like 250 year old school, I think. Um, and I slid down the stairs on my back and I displaced my sacroiliac joint. Right. Now I had already decided that I was gonna be a nurse. My mum didn't so much believe in conventional medicine. Um, so I went to an osteopath who clicked me back in place um but when I started nursing they didn't believe that I'd done that because they didn't believe in the work of an osteopath mm -hmm. um and I had physio quite early on because you know lugging patients I'm I'm small I'm only like five foot one and a half something like Snap. that <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling you might be um, <laughs> so lugging patients around this is before we had hoists and everything and you know moving and handling training so I had physio from, from the start as well because my back wasn't really that strong. I played it down in the interview for nursing because I knew I really wanted to be a nurse. Yeah. And my sacroiliac joint, like I'm still a bit twisted. And I had like a double scoliosis as well when I um, was x-rayed with a chiropractor, I had a double scoliosis. So yeah, I just think that's an, 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 another, oh, <laughs> another interesting um, kind of common ground. Yeah, so it's, it was my sacroiliac joint, which I feel is a blend of sacrum and and base chakra. I think it's mm -hmm. a bit of both. The yeah, end of that. me too. And I think um, any of the distortion of the sexuality or the sexual codes, I think, is linked very much yeah. to that area too. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And that's in all of our DNA. I think no matter what's happened to us in our lives, I feel that that distortion energy is inevitably in, in our genetic line Absolutely. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was I going to ask you? So I know you work with light language as well, which is interesting. And I don't feel this is something that you, sh this is something you just do privately, is it when you're out in nature? Yeah. And I, something that I've been aware of that I'm doing and have been much more able to do it in lockdown because there's fewer people around. So I've been dancing the codes in. Now I've, I've danced them in stationary um, since 2016. No, actually 2015, the, Lion, the Lion's Gate of 2015 was huge for me. Um, and I was guided to stand now when i used to do reiki attunements i used to my reiki master taught me to have this hand like this and you're using the other one to to put the symbols in but this was different i had to put my hand like straight up in the air and anchor all these codes in me which was quite forceful when new new energies are coming through it's really kind of like I'll say tapping them into my body, but it's way stronger than tapping. And this happened in 2015. And then after that, I started doing like more body activations. And I wasn't sure what I was doing with my hands, but now I know that it's light language, but it's, it's instead of it being flat on a page, it's, it's, you know, the spirals are actually spirals. Some of the lines might look straight on a page, but they're going this direction, that direction, wow. you know, up and down and, and a tangles. But you do this when you're out in nature as well, don't you? Yeah. And, and I feel what we're doing is awakening the song lines. It's like a lot of the song lines were closed All down. Over. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> <All over. laughs> I'm feeling that one as well. Wow. So a lot of the original ley lines, they call them song lines in Australia, were closed down. And what, um, oh, I'm getting quite teary speaking about this. The reason they're called song lines is because they're sung. People sing the song lines in. And I feel that we are oh, reactivating these song lines now as well, but also bringing the new frequencies in. So we're, we're reactivating the old original 
um, organic song lines that were prevalent on the earth before the inverted matrix came in and superimposed them. So a lot of the work I've done is to unravel the superimposed inverted matrix lines, but then you bring in the organic song lines in, but bring in these new crystalline frequencies and merging the two. Wow. Does that make sense? It really resonates with me, actually. I mean, I couldn't, I, I couldn't have, you just articulated it. What sort of, I, I didn't really understand or could put language to, if that makes sense. I mean, wow. Even what you just described in there around the, the song. I seen a sound going back to, I think it was 2018. We were listening to these tones. There's six of them. Now, I couldn't tell you what they were sitting here, right? But I think it was tone, I don't know, six, but there were seven of them. And the next thing I'm just, Closed, I'm, I'm in it and, and the next seen the sound and it's more it sounds like what you've just described it the, the color to it the color to it was just oh my god and how it was moving and I remember coming out of this meditation I've just seen the sound and, and Gem saying to me okay <laughs> I've just seen the sound and I likened it to um you know, the, the universe means one song doesn't it and you just mentioned the place of origin which is the original I've never could. Oh my goodness! Of course it does. Sorry, carry on. That was just like a boom. <laughs> and I just the place of origin is, and I just thought, wow, okay, more will be because my friends would say more will be revealed. It's okay because I just get all this stuff all the time, and I'd be like, somewhere in me, I knew. Yeah, but it's like the like the interactions we have with. Others as well, that sort of puts it into perspective for me of what and, and the confirmation, yeah. which is just ongoing, isn't it? It's just, is I mean, it? I felt a lot of this, what we're discussing. It, that mm -hmm. daily truth bumps. I hear the sound and then I feel it. Just it's just like, okay, this is this is pure confirmation, pure activation confirmation coming through. There's a word for seeing sound, I can't remember what it is. Um, it's not kinesthetic, it's something something similar and I sometimes see sound as well but I, I definitely feel the sound in different parts of my body I also feel taste in different parts of my body it's like I feel the different harmonies of food and I like there to be balance in the food so that different different frequencies are stimulated in my body wow I love that and I also feel that we're going to be Sometimes when I'm doing treatments, and I work with sound a lot, and I've used chimes in my treatments for a long time. So they're these metal chimes, they're called elfin chimes that are held in, in wood. And when I first started using them on the body, you like put them on the body and, and ding them. And when the body is full of a lot of distorted energy, the sound doesn't resonate. And there were many times that I put them on and it'd be like, blink, and it'd sound really discordant. And I'd think, oh, it's broken. And I'd start yeah. to lift it up. Yeah. And as I was lifting it off the physical body, it would start to resonate more. Do it here and it sounded good. Put it in the body and you can hear that it's muffled. You can wow. hear that the sound just isn't reverberating. And then I do my stuff to clear the body. And then, and sometimes with the sound as well, like a, lo a lot of stuff weaving energies into the body and, and shifting energies out. And then the sound would get more, more reverberant again and more resonant. And I was like, that's really interesting. And it hadn't occurred to me that that would happen, but it actually makes a lot of sense too. Yeah. But I feel that some of what I'm tuning into, I'm feeling the sound of the body. So it's like I'm hearing the sound of the body without consciously hearing the sound of the body. Wow. Yeah, but yeah. I feel that that's one of the senses that's going to be coming in as well, because our senses are really expanding. We're, the senses that we're using are, you know, there's apparently 360 senses and we're maybe using six. So I feel that we will start to hear the sounds a bit more. And maybe on some level we are. It's like um, autistic children get very sensitive to light as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I get that a little bit. It's like it's too loud. Oversensitive. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get that also. Yeah. Like with flore fluorescent lighting, it's like, oh, turn that off. It's too loud. No, yeah. it's light. But to me, it's kind of like it's too loud. Yeah. 
and the overstimulation that you get when you're around too many people it's it's like we're hearing too much it's too much information yeah that as well yeah and also um i, I don't like labels as such and you know the, the term empath or i just go but i'm i'm starting to learn i mean i know pick stuff up from people but I mean, a guy yesterday, we bumped into him in the supermarket and he's telling us about his dad who died and there was something he, he regretted that he didn't go around or, and, oh my God, if, if the way it plays out in my body and I feel this, this really heavy sadness in this man, you know, just really, 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 I mean, and I get that a lot, I pick, I, I'm aware to pick people's stuff up, but it's like it's getting louder. It's getting, it's getting louder. And also how I have to learn to clear that quicker. Yeah. Because at one time I, I wouldn't do anything with it. I'd just go, is that mine? Is that, is that, my, is that tapping into my stuff? No, this, and as a counsellor, mm. I really had to work on that stuff where, where, I, where, they, where the client is and where I am in terms of empathy. Yeah. And whether it's been, so it's like all that's getting louder as well. The senses are just, I mean, I hear that, I hear, I heard that, you know, the, the, the frequencies anyway and coming in and, but even that's changing. Yeah. Even that's changing. Can you describe how is that really hard to articulate in words? With the sound. Of how it's changed. Okay. Um, now I don't know whether this is my own energy field going on here. Um, The tones change. Yeah. The tones change. And it's not, I mean, sometimes it'd be me left, me right, or sometimes both. Then it started being both together. And I thought, okay, maybe this is the balance of the, of the you know, the, 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 the male and the female. And I'm not saying that all the time, but when I am in balance, it tends to flow and sound different. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And even the tones that we get in our ears is different as well. I heard a completely new, different, yeah. different one the other day. And I've always felt, my, my Reiki master shared with me a long time ago, that, that the tones that you're hearing are like, um, it's a download. It's the information is compacted and we hear it as sound, but it's like huge pockets of, of information that we're being given. And we may or we may not be conscious of it. But when it happens, I, I'll just say thank you because I know on some level I'm receiving it, whether or not it's consciously or not, and it doesn't matter. It and doesn't it's not just the um, information, or it could be like this is still information, but it's it's like a, an upgrade as yeah, well. That makes complete sense. And I used to. Um, because I'm primarily claircognizant and clairsentient, so I would just know things like you, which is your claircognizance, and I feel that drops in for me crown. That's that's where we receive that information. Clairvoyance is, is third eye. Clairsentience, I kind of feel that might be solar plexus or it might be heart, I'm not sure. Um, I think it could be both. I think yeah, it could be both. Yeah, and clairaudience is, is like your third and fourth ears that someone described to me are like teddy bear ears, like here on... <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> but I kind of hear hear messages. I used to hear them coming in here on my right side, but then it became that it was just it's all round now. It's all round. I hear it from all over. Um, I've completely forgotten where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> Talking oh, about yeah, I know where I was going to go with it. So. So when I would feel the presence of angels in the room with me, it would be that my left arm, I would get like tingles around here. And it was almost as though one of the angels had just placed a hand really gently on my arm, as if to say, we're here, Denise. Okay, yeah. And I would put my palms up and just say, and I'd ask some questions, but it's like I then put earmuffs on. I asked some questions, but I didn't actually want to hear. But I would feel their energy and I'd feel them all around me. And I would 
normally cry as well because my heart yeah. was not, not tears of sadness but just tears of, of just, joy yeah 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 and recognition and home it was that it. Home. yeah we're here and, um yeah yeah and I would just receive a session basically I would just feel all this energy coming into me and I may or may not have been conscious of, of what it was about is that similar similar for you as well very much so, very, very much so. And I mean, when this angel showed up again last week, I was just, it's a sense of, I was just overwhelmed with this gratitude and feeling held yeah. and worthy that, wow, you're just showing up, for, you're showing up for me yet again to be held yeah. in this space of just, just, just like pure love. Pure love, pure, pure love, pure love. Yeah. And it's just like... And it's a beautiful space to be in as well. And, Gorgeous. you know, especially those times when, when it's been a bit dark or you're just working through some of the dark things, to know that you're just being held. And it's interesting as well, because for a while, the guides that I have, I didn't so much work with spirit guides, but it was, it was the angelic realm and the ascended master realm that I was consciously working with. And now I know that a lot of my, my um, team is me, it's my multidimensional aspects, but I wouldn't have trusted me as a team at that time when it first started coming yeah. in. Wow. So the concept of angels as, as higher beings, I could put my trust in until I learned to trust myself. And now I know that it's, you know, the dragons or you know whatever it is a lot of so many of them are actually aspects of me that I'm learning to that I'm merging with as well Well, yeah I mean I've had a lot a lot with Metatron and stuff but Joseph said to me Joseph Delaney we, we had a chat there a couple of weeks back and he said you know we were talking about the similarities of the, of the fire in us and the, I said well I, I don't get this dragon stuff yet I said I, I don't know whether I ever he said oh no you will he said, no, you will, because it, 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 it's part of your makeup. It's who, it's who you are. And I've always had that, that fire and that conviction. Yeah. Um, which I can trust, funny enough. You know, it, 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 it's, for example, if it means me standing up for something I believe that is right, or for someone else, rescuing someone else, yeah. you know, like, I will go there with that, with that um, conviction of that fire energy. And a lot that's been helping me with that stuff is the breathing. And I just started organically getting these edges to just raw, yeah. just raw. And I loved what you said yesterday um, in terms of because it's been organic with me as well. Go out when there's been a, an anger energy or whatever, it's whether it's mine or not. You go out like kids do, stamp on the ground to yeah. move this energy through me and do all that stuff, which is just just brings me right back into that space of I, I feel you might be tapping into the dragon energy there um and for me when I know I've got that raw in there primal, in kind of primal isn't it it's like yeah and I, I love it <laughs> it's amazing it's an amazing release and I think of the kiwi the New Zealand hacker you know they're like you know you know the um hacker that they 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 do and I do a lot of those same mm -hmm. movements and a lot of the facial expressions as well I, I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't want someone <laughs> in front of me to do that not just because it looks so <laughs> funny and weird but actually there's so much energy coming out of my eyes I feel like I would frazzle anybody that's actually there in front of me I feel that I would like you know it'd be like a cartoon thing they they'd just be like a puff of black smoke and there'd just be all these cinders on the, on the ground because it's quite brutal that energy that comes out as well it's 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 very very fierce it's very very primal. fierce yeah and it's a real i call it the dragon breath I like the dragon roar yeah yeah because it's the solar plexus stuff and i've had a fair bit of like heartburn and, and stuff recently and a, a bit of reflux and it feels like my solar plexus there's too much fire there and it needs to, I need to like release some of that wow. fire that and it almost sense. feels like there's fire coming out of my mouth that's why it feels so dragon-like it's kind of like real yeah really potent fierce heat 
which is interesting because you know gentle Denise here is quite <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny when that happens it's it's quite a contrast but it's it's all in there it's it's all part of me oh yeah I don't doubt that <laughs> <laughs> you see I was always um, seen upon as someone who, who, who will go there who will I mean that was distorted within my behaviours and my thought processes, but I always had that fire energy. And then when people started to say to me, so it's sort of the opposite to you, wow, you're really gentle. And I'd be like, me? <laughs> I'm gentle. I had to really start getting in touch with that, that, that aspect of myself. And as I said earlier, I used to bristle against pink, against femininity, against the angels. Well, be all the next thing, it's angels I'm getting. It's not dragons. <laughs> yeah. It's angels because I really needed to get in touch with that essence of 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 a uh, feminine for me so it's interesting isn't it yeah I hear that and I can see why that would have come in for you first it, it was it was like the fire would have been too much because you were you were fire already yeah yeah um and I was very in touch with my masculine side as as a nurse which yeah. you know you would think it would be more the feminine the nurturing side but as a senior nurse as well you know you've got to be structured you've got ah. to be organized um and I remember wearing a suit for an interview and like looking, <laughs> I felt like I was in drag like I would always wear pants, I would always wear pants. <laughs> but going to Australia for me was where I really got in touch with my feminine side and bought girly shoes instead of Doc Martens or monkey boots I bought like girly shoes Jeez, yeah and it was so hot I had to wear skirts and more feminine things so I really got in touch with my feminine side over there so I feel fairly balanced in that now and I enjoy moving house is a time particularly where my masculine comes in it's the structure it's the organization Absolutely. yeah all, all that and I I really enjoy that side as well so I I feel fairly balanced in both yeah more so since I did that in a marriage ceremony the other day out in nature. That was really powerful. Um, yeah, if you've not seen it, I, I did a post about it and it was it was fun to write that and get into my writing again. Um, but it was, it was an actual ceremony that I didn't know I was gonna do. There was a process that led me to it of an actual marriage of my inner masculine and feminine energies. Wow. Now I've merged them before I've, I've brought them out of my body and seen them in front of me and connected them and merged them. But this felt very different. This was a marriage. Wow. And a ceremony, an actual ceremony for it as well. And I'm looking forward. There's going to be some kind of workshop relating to that that I'm, I'm going to yeah. do because it was really powerful um, to actually, actually marry them. Oh, wow. Yeah. I can see you because you're already doing the counseling work. I can see you merging that with energy work. And you've already got the um oh what, what's the words for it? Where you where you're actually looking into the body. The fact that you've been doing that with yourself, I think that will come with other people as well, that you'll actually be able to see into their bodies whether it be in physical form as it has been for you or whether it, <clears throat> whether it will be in energy form but I can yes. see you actually merging those like the counseling with energy work as well well that's been that's been there somewhere that exactly what you just said and uh, not so much as in like you know but that's what I feel really really drawn to that's that really resonates with me I'm only, I'm only, go sorry on. it's only, I'm only sort of stepping into you see because I, I I I had an awful lot of self-doubt going on and all that limiting stuff going on and now it, it's like okay it's like the universe saying no no more no more you, you, this is time now you, you step up and you step out but I I, I have had a sense of, of that around that the, the, the pain body, the energy blockages due to, and it does marry nicely with the with the majority I, I, I'm, I'm trained in. Yeah, you know, 
as well as my own experiences of stuff, I'm, everyone's different in our process and how it affects us. But it's just all sorts of coming together now. It's tying together in terms of that stuff. And it's it's integrating it together. So I feel that's where I'm going to be going with it. And I think the counselling is amazing, but it would add a whole a whole different dimension to it as well and, and go yeah. a lot deeper than the counselling alone. Because I, I feel, you know, counselling does have its, have its place, but there is also the place for the energy work within the counselling as well. Yeah. That will take it to a much deeper level and more quickly clear things from them as well, the traumas. And, you know, because talking about it is, is one thing, but... Clearing. The, yeah, the clearing process of, of the actual energy may not always be cleared just, just through through yeah and it's it's pretty um i'm pretty good at if you can say that yeah <laughs> i'm pretty good at sitting with someone and sort of listening and knowing where the root is straight away and there's more than one route sometimes because but i can generally get a feel of right i know where this is rooted i know where this is rooted some people come in with a lot of stuff they want to talk about and articulate and some people are so cut off from the feelings yeah so in terms of that stuff, it, it is about bringing people back to themselves in order to be able to process the emotional body, the pain body, and then clear, yeah. which is part of that process. But I understand what you're saying. It can be clear quicker on an energetic level. And that's where I'm sort of trying to just find my way into what will work for each person on an individual basis, if, if so to speak. But I do believe more will be revealed around that stuff. I'm a great trusted and believer because everything's come my way. I mean, this counselling stuff started four years ago. What would it cost me? You're talking near on six grand. And then that, it's like I was spoon fed. No, this is for you. And it was all given to me for nothing. Even my supervision, because I, I wasn't financially able to, you know, fund it myself. So it's all just fell in mm -hmm. to place. And I've just finished and qualified. And even my supervision, she said, no, I want to give it to you. That would have cost me like £40, £45 a session. So it's just like, thank you. And, you know, so, yeah, I absolutely know I'm on the right, right yeah. in terms of healing. And yeah, totally supported by the universe in this. And, yeah, and yeah. you'll be a really powerful, I don't like to use the word healer because I don't call myself a healer, even though I've been doing healing work for almost 20 years, because... The only person I'm responsible for healing is myself, but I can help other people. Other people, to heal yeah. Themselves. Yeah. Um, and I identify with that. I identify, you know, the words we use, like he, I know I use it he or even the word powerful. I've struggled and I've had to say to myself, no, we're, 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 all, we're all, you can say it to someone else, you can say it about someone else, but it, it's just, uh, it's, because um, I do believe we all, we all are our own healers. We all are. We all have that in us but in whatever way that plays out or shows up for us but I hear you on the heel a bit I've had people say oh you're psychic or you're this no <laughs> and sometimes no. we do just need help to get there you yeah. know we don't have to do it all on our own and even asking for help in that way or receiving help in that way from other people in instead of doing it all on our own yeah because sometimes I've I've bit more being of the nature that no I can do it you know I'll do it myself kind of thing rather than right. yeah. allowing myself to receive so that is a huge lesson for a lot of people to actually first of all ask for help yeah and then receive it that was massive and that's why I kept getting the pain in the rise on I mean this is your receiving hand chef you can give but you need to be learn to receive and 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 I know um being in 12 step recovery and, and having a support network I had to learn to ask for that it's a we we can't do it on our own and it's the same principle with anything isn't it it's there's, there's, there's other people you resonate with there's other people who are like my who practice similar stuff and it is about being part of that unity rather than because the condition of our oh, self-reliance is so overlapping into the paradox of no, this is a wig. This is a this is a weak thing. This is an I thing. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also a shadow side to that in terms of 
some people can use you a bit, as a bit of a crux and not be doing, people still have to do the inner work themselves, but we can kind of point them in the right direction and, and hold their hand with it a little bit until they're at a point when they're ready to do it themselves. Yeah, so important. I mean, I only heard a little bit of you then, it went off again. <laughs> I can't even remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with you anyway, whatever you said. <laughs> Well, I feel we're drawing to a close a little bit. Is there anything that you would like to share about or or say before we um, before we do draw it to a close? I'm okay to draw to a close. It's been absolutely lovely. Really are. It's been really, really lovely to connect with you. This has been an awesome chat. Um, I'd love to have you back on again sometime. And aside from that, just stay in touch and, you know, catch up every now and then because the um, the commonality between us yeah. is just off the charts. I felt it. I felt it on every part. I mean, it was just like, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to everybody watching as well. Thank if you're you. able to share, if this has been useful, Feel free to share it around um, and thank you everyone for all the support that you have been giving as well. It's, it's really, really appreciated. Um, I will bob my PayPal in the comments if anybody feels to contribute. All contributions are always welcomed um, and thank you in advance for that. So thank you for everyone watching the live, watching on the replay and on YouTube. I'm going to be going live in about 24 minutes with Martin McNichol, um, which again is going to be, a, not surprising, my head's been groggy today with, with both of you on um, <laughs> so many codes floating through. So, yeah, Martin is on at 3pm, 3, 3 so thank you and we will see you soon. I'm going to stop the live stream. Namaste.